Hello there, Dukely here, and today we're going to play The Stanley Parable. Uh, it's which we are playing. If you look on the monitor there, there's one of those infinite loop things, see? Ooh. Um, right. So this is... Most people know what this game is, and kind of have an idea of what it's about. Uh, it's like a weird kind of puzzle thing, uh, that's got some, I guess, maybe psych psychological things in it. Um, this was given to me by Dr. Zebra, so thanks a lot, Zebra. Uh, and I think we'll do an episode, and if you guys are interested, we'll keep we'll keep playing it, because there's, um, I think you can play this forever, and probably see all kinds of different things. So, here we go. I'll try to be quiet when the narrator guy comes on. Uh, hopefully he's loud enough. I might have turned him down too much. It's loading. Okay, a long loading screen. I don't want to skip, I don't want to like stop and start again because I don't want to miss anything. So you just have to sit here and watch this. No, I'm just This is the story of a man named Stanley. Stanley worked for a company in a big building where he was employee number 427. Employee number 427's job was simple. He sat at his desk in room 427 and he pushed buttons on a keyboard. Orders came to him through a monitor at the desk, telling him what buttons to push, how long to push them, and in what order. This is what employee 427 did every day, of every month, of every year. And although others might have considered it soul winning, Stanley relished every moment that the orders came in, as though he had been made exactly for this job. And Stanley was happy. Not the best audio quality in that. Something very peculiar happened. Something that would forever change Stanley. Something he would never quite forget. He had been at his desk for nearly an hour when he realized that not one single order had arrived on the monitor for him to follow. Oh. No one had showed up to give him instructions, call a meeting, or even say hi. Hmm. Never in all his years at the company had this happened. This complete isolation. Something was very clearly wrong. Shocked, frozen solid, Stanley found himself unable to move for the longest time. But as he came to his wits and regained his senses, he got up from his desk and stepped out of his office. Okay. So here we are. Um, I want to say right away, this is made with a source engine. Um, but it doesn't look real sourcey. Um... If you've watched the original, or seen the original, or played the original, uh, it looks a little different. But, uh, it's been, uh, it's been updated since, you know, since the original, obviously. So it doesn't look really, um, source-like. That's where I'm going with that. That's locked. Okay. All of his co-workers oh. were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Look, this person's left their no computer on. hard Stanley looked, he couldn't find a trace of his co-workers. Uh, well, this person didn't have a computer. This person sharpens pencils all day. A oh, phone. Who farted? I don't know. It wasn't me, though. I, <laughs> you would have known if it was me. Can I turn this back on? No, sorry, I turned it off. Ooh, copier. Oh, I can't read any of that. It's just... Oh! For the love of God, please unplug... Me? This... Something office... The deep carpet... Damp carpet... I don't know. I'm gonna give up on reading that right away. I like... Work... Whoa. I just... Hate... My boss. Oh, that's... Nice. Okay. All these doors are locked. I don't know why that is. It's a really bad painting of like... Some Colorado landscape or something. Who's throwing this shit everywhere? Look at this. Come on, people. It's po it's called conservation. Let's get with the program, okay? Oh, that's that, that guy again. This person's not even doing work. Oh, wait a minute. It could be. There might be a spy. Anyway, I'll just turn it off. Okay. Oh. 
Sammy went around touching every little thing in the office, but it didn't make a single difference. Nor did it advance the story in any way. <laughs> okay, sorry, I'm just trying things. Oh no, someone spilled their coffee. And who's left these open? That's a friggin' hazard right there. Shut up. Okay. Well, I can, I can manipulate that door, but none of the other ones. Whatever. What the hell is a coffee cup meeting happening in here? Whatever. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. Wait, what? Shit. Okay. Alright. I'll go through the left door. Nice leaves. More random landscapes. Everything's locked. I guess I just... If it's open, it's open. Yet there was not a single person here either. Feeling a wave of disbelief. Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find an answer there. Well, well. Do not alter without consulting whiteboard manager. Rip Franz. Is this the whiteboard manager? The future was yesterday, tomorrow is now. This is so accurate. That's like the kind of bullshit they have in offices, isn't it? See, what do people want? Oh, what? Number of slides on this slide. Oh, that's great. This is the kind of shit I would have pulled off if I were to give a presentation. Rate it which charts on the same slide depict the same information. That's fantastic. What's this? Buy quarterly post review review. Uh, what? Oh. Circle the top 20 things you love most about your boss. Fill the tri in triplicate and return to your boss appreciation specialist. Man, you could just, like, stand here and look at this shit all day. Solving a personal conflict? Okay, whatever. Broom closet. Oh, that opens. Look at that. Stanley stepped into the broom closet, but there was nothing here. So he turned around and got back on track. Okay. There's nothing there. Coming to a staircase, Stanley walked upstairs to his boss's office. Okay. Oh, bright! Is this it? Nope. Whoa! This is quite the place! Executive bathroom? Aww. I want to take a giant poo in his, in his lovely bathroom. Wow, this is a lot nicer than the rest of the office. Holy shit. Two phones. Business time. Can I go through here? No. Okay. Stepping into his manager's office, Stanley was once again stunned to discover not an indication of any human life. Shocked, unraveled, Stanley wondered in disbelief who orchestrated this. Ew, can't he? Secret was being held from him. What he could not have known was that the keypad behind the boss's desk guarded the terrible truth that his boss had been keeping from him. And so the boss had assigned it an extra secret pin number. Yeah. 2845. But of course, Stanley couldn't possibly get incredibly by simply pushing <laughs> random <laughs> buttons on the keypad. Stanley happened to input huh. the correct I don't know why, I just thought it would be over there. Amazing. He stepped into the newly opened passageway. Why does Dorney to be that tall? Okay. This is like some creepy back room. There's an elevator here with a button. Oh, so that button works. What a strange game. Oh! Oh, loading screen. Come on, you're better than this, Stanley Parable. <sighs> oh, well, it's going really fast, though. I just know if I cut the recording, it'll just go to the end. Okay, it's it's almost there. There we go. Stanley realized he felt a bit peculiar. It was a stirring of emotion in his chest, as though he felt more free to think for himself, to question the nature of his job. 
Why did he feel this now, when for years it had never occurred to him? This question would not go unanswered for long. Maybe I'm the only one that ever worked here and I just didn't notice any other people. God, I wish that was the case. Stanley walked straight ahead through the large door. That what? Mind control facility. Oh my fuck, what? Uh I've been doing everything else he's told me, so why don't I just continue doing that? Okay, there is a floor there. <laughs> Wasn't sure. Right, a button on a computer. The lights rose on an enormous Whoa! packed with television screens. What horrible secret did this place hold? Stanley thought to himself. Did he have the strength to find out? I don't know. This is so strange. There is a lot of television screens. Television screens. Uh, employee observation protocol? Okay. What? This is just like a security room. I don't know what the big deal is. Yeah, look at this. It's a security room. <laughs> that guy's fired. Whoa. What's wrong with this one? Well, I mean, this is England, isn't it? Because I'm guessing by the narrator's voice that we're in England, so this wouldn't be abnormal. <laughs> uh, but I guess it is? Employee number 104 is fired. This mind control facility, it was too horrible to believe it couldn't be true. Had Stanley really been under someone's control all this time? Was this the only reason he was happy with his boring job, Bob? That his emotions had been manipulated to accept it blindly? Ah, uh, that would appear to be the case, yes. No. Oh. He refused to believe it. He couldn't accept it. His own pirate in someone else's control? Never. It was unthinkable. Wasn't it? Was it even possible? Had he truly spent his entire life utterly blind to the world? But here was the proof. The heart of the operation. Controls labeled with emotions. Happy or sad ah. or content. Oh. Walking, eating, working. All of it monitored and commanded from this very place. And as the cold reality of his past began to sink in, Stanley decided that this machinery would never again exert its terrible power over another human life. For he would dismantle the controls once and for all. Okay. I have no idea how to do that. Um, there's a big red button. That usually uh, indicates some sort of explosion being uh, the result. What? Facility power. Let's we'll just turn the power off. How about that? What's this button? Five. Mind controls idle awaiting input. Oh, look at that. What's this coded in? Christ, I don't know. C++ maybe. I can't really see it from here. And when at last ah! The source of the room's oh, no, wait. Ah. Oh, Stanley. <laughs> you didn't just activate the controls, did you? After they kept you enslaved all these years, you go and you try to take control of the machine for yourself. Is that what you wanted? Control? Well, that's actually a really good idea. Oh, Stanley, I applaud your effort, I really do. But you need to understand, there's only so much that machine can do. You were supposed to let it go, turn the controls off, and leave. If you want to throw my story off track, you're going to have to do much better than that. I'm afraid you don't have nearly the power you think you do. For example, and I believe you'll find this pertinent, Stanley suddenly realized he had just initiated the network's emergency detonation system. In the event that this machine is activated without proper DNA identification, nuclear detonators are set to explode, eliminating the entire complex. What? How long until detonation then? Hmm, let's say... Two minutes. This is making things a little more fun, isn't it, Stanley? It's your time to shine. You are the star. Oh, God. It's your story now. Shape it to your heart's desires. 
Oh, this is much better than what I had in mind. What a shame we have so little time left to enjoy it. Mere moments until the bomb goes off. Wait. What precious moments each one of them is. It's charging, it says. About me, where we're going, what all this means. I barely know where Three. What's that? You'd like to know where your co-workers are. A moment of solace before you're obliterated. Where's right, three? In a good mood. You're gonna die anyway. I'll tell you exactly what Three. I erased them. I turned off the machine. I set you free. Of course, that was merely in this instance of the story. Sometimes when I tell it, I simply let you sit there in your office forever, pushing buttons endlessly and then dying alone. What? Other times, I let the office sink into the ground, swallowing everyone inside, or I let it burn to a crisp. I have to say this, though. This version of events has been rather amusing. Watching you try to make sense of everything and take back the control wrested away from you... I don't know! Rich. I almost hate to see it go. I'm sure whatever... Where's I three, goddammit? ...will be even better. What? My goodness, only 34 seconds left. But I'm enjoying this so much. You know what? To hell with it. I'm going to put some extra time on the clock. Why not? These are precious additional seconds, Stanley. Button uh... grow on trees. Oh dear me, what's the matter, Stanley? Is it that you have no idea where you're going or what you're supposed to be doing what? right now? Or did you just assume when you saw ah, the shit. timer that something in this room was capable of turning it on? I mean, look at you. Red. Running from button to button, screen to screen, clicking on every little thing in this room. These numbered buttons, no, these colored ones, or maybe this big red button, or this door. Everything, anything, something here will save me. Oh, God. Why would you think that, Stanley? That this video game can be beaten? One solved? Do you have any idea uh. what your purpose in this place is? <laughs> ah! <laughs> Stanley. Oh. You're in for quite a disappointment, but here's a spoiler for you. That timer isn't a catalyst to keep the action moving along. It's just seconds ticking away to your death. You're only still playing instead of watching a cutscene because I want to watch you for every moment that you're powerless. To see you made humble. This is not a challenge. Press A, a tragedy. You want it to Shit, that doesn't work either. Fine, but I'm going to destroy it first, so you Take a look at the clock, Stanley. That's 30 seconds you have left to struggle. 30 seconds until a big boom and then nothing. No ending here. Just you being blown. <laughs> will you cling desperately to your frail life? Or will you let it go peacefully? Another choice. Make it count. Or don't. It's all the same to me. All a part of the joke. And believe me, I will be laughing at every second of your inevitable life from the moment we fade in until the moment I say happily ever up. Oh no. <laughs> wow. Well, I should have just pressed off. Am I dead? Oh. Oh, it started over. Okay. Right. All of his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. No. I'm not listening to that guy anymore. When Stanley came to a set of two open doors, this was not the correct way to the meeting room, and Stanley knew it perfectly well. No, I didn't. Perhaps he wanted to stop by the employee lounge first, just yep. to admire it. Yep, that's exactly right. Ah, yes. Truly a room worth admiring. It had really been worth the detour after all, just to spend a Ooh. few moments here in this immaculate, beautifully constructed room. It is nice. Simply stood, but eager to get back to business, Stanley took the first open door on his left. <laughs> fuck you, guy. I don't think so. I'm gonna go this way. Oh, look at this room. Stanley was so bad at following Ooh. directions, it's incredible he wasn't five years ago. Hmm. That's true. It's very true. Do not jump from the cargo lift while it is in motion. Will cause death. Well, maybe. Look, Stanley, I think perhaps we've gotten off on the wrong foot here. I'm not your enemy, really, I'm not. I realize that investing your trust in someone else can be difficult, but the fact is that the story has been about nothing but you 
All this time? There's someone you've been neglecting, Stanley. Someone you've forgotten about. Please, stop trying to make every decision by yourself. Now, I'm not asking for me. I'm asking for her. Who? This is it, Stanley. Your chance to redeem yourself. To put your work aside. To let her back into your life. Who's She's what? been waiting. That's her, Stanley. You need to be the one to do this. To reach out to her. If you can truly place your faith in another, then pick up the phone. Ha! I told you it's England. Okay. Hello? Stanley here. What's that? My insurance has expired. No. Uh, oh, Stanley, is that you? Uh, hold on, sweetie. Sorry to keep you waiting. I'm just pulling the bread out of the oven. Oh, Four tries. Okay, there we go. All right, now I want you to come in and tell me all about your day. What the fuck? <laughs> gotcha. <laughs> oh, come on. Did you actually think you had a loving wife who'd want to commit their life to you? I'm trying to make a point here, Stanley. I'm trying to get you to see something. Come inside. Let me show you what's really going on here. Nope. Sorry. But you are my story now. Okay. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. Uh, chair blocking the doorway. This is a very hey. sad story about the death of a man named Stanley. I'm sorry? Press 8 on your keyboard. No. <laughs> Fuck you, I'm not gonna press 8 on the keyboard. It's gonna kill me. 7. That didn't do anything. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 9... Zero. <sighs> okay. I'll press eight. Ready? Stanley is quite a boring fellow. Oh. A job that demands nothing of him. And every button that he pushes Ooh. is a reminder of the inconsequential nature of his existence. Why is, um... The room arranged this way? Look at him there, pushing buttons. Uh. Doing exactly what he's told to do. Now he's pushing a button. Now, he's eating lunch. Now, he's going home. Now, he's coming back to work. One might even feel sorry for him, except that he's chosen this life. I have? No, I want to leave. I don't like this. I don't like it. Eight. But in his mind, ah. In his mind, he can go on fantastic adventures. From behind his desk, Stanley dreamed of wild expeditions into the unknown. Fantastic discoveries of new lands. It was wonderful. And each day that he returned to work was a reminder that none of it would ever happen to him. Oh, good. And so he began to oh. fantasize about his own job. First, he imagined that one day while at work, he stepped up from his desk to realize that all of his co workers, his boss, everyone in the building had suddenly vanished off the face of the earth. The thought excited him terribly what so he went further he imagined that he came to two open doors and that he could go through either at last <laughs> well wow. choice it barely even mattered what lay behind each door the mere thought that his decisions would mean something was almost too wonderful to behold uh as he wandered through this fantasy world, uh, he began to fill it with many possible paths and destinations. Down one path lay an enormous round room with monitors and mind controls. Okay, remember that. Down another was a yellow line that weaved in many directions. And down another was a game with a baby. And he what? called it the Stanley Parable. Okay. It was such a wonderful fantasy. <laughs> what? So in his head, he relived it again, and then again, and again, over and over, wishing beyond hope that it would never end, that he might always feel this free. Surely there's an answer down some new path, mustn't there be? Perhaps if he played just one more time. Wait. Okay. But there is no answer. Oh. How could there possibly be? In reality, all he's doing is pushing the same buttons he always has. Nothing has changed. 
The longer he spends here, the more invested he gets, the more he forgets which life is the real one. And I'm trying to tell him this, that in this world, he can never be anything but an observer, that as long as he remains here, he's slowly killing himself. But he won't listen to me. He won't stop. Here, watch this. Stanley, the next time the screen asks you to push a button, do not do it. Okay. I'm not going to push it. I'll wait here all day. I won't push it. <laughs> I'll wait. I'm I'll wait forever. This is ridiculous. Should I push it? I should push it. What if I push the wrong button? Okay. Ah. You see? Can he just not hear me? How can I tell him in a way that he'll understand that every second he remains here, he's electing to kill himself? How can I get him to see what I see? How can I make him look at himself? I suppose I can't. Not in the way I want him to. But I don't make the rules. I simply play to my intended purpose, the same as Stanley. We're not so different, I suppose. I'll try once more to convey all this to him. I'm compelled to. I must. Perhaps, well, maybe this time he'll see. Maybe this time. And I tried again. And what? Stanley pushed a button. And I tried again. And Stanley pushed a button. And I tried. Oh my god. This game is fucking crazy. Holy shit. I'm sorry if there's not a whole lot of commentary in this, but there is a narrator who's saying most of the things, so... Holy crap. Okay, well, I think uh, I'm gonna end the episode here, and if you want to see more, uh, let me know, and we'll continue playing. Um, so, uh, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, thanks again, Zebra. Uh, and I will see you guys in the next one. Goodbye!